questions I do, but it just makes sense that they would uh, kind of be uh, understandable from other points of view also. Yes. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Very good. I mean, it's not like I'm asking stuff that's off the wall. <laughs> but not too much, anyway. See how off the wall we can get today. Hello, Richard or John. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. I almost called you Richard because... My when I used to be in a Tibetan group, the leader of the uh, early sort of instructor, his name was Richard. No, nope, just John. I got a, a little question. Um, I'd just like to know what's what's the difference between meditation and concentration? Because I, I saw on the selfless self book, they say bhajan, meditation, concentration, those three kind of tools, if you can call them like this, they are really helpful. And for me, I say, okay, meditation, okay, bhajan is okay, but what mean by concentration? You yeah, just positive. come back to the self who I truly am. The, yeah, the concentrate on the invisible concentrator until that disappears within the concentration. Meditation is just concentration. And meditation is also meditating on the meditator until the meditator disappears within the meditation. And then your bhajan, each one is just basically to dissolve body. Yeah. Because the bhajan's kind of with that spiritual atmosphere and the 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 feeling, the vibrations, it kind of vibrates you away from the feeling of the body and you start to feel more expansive. The same when you are concentrating on that invisible concentrator, then you're again, you're unwinding everything because mm. from that position, there's no way anything outside of the body could be true and then the mm -hmm. concept of where is the body the body is inside my own self mm -hmm. and it, it's just the five elements like uh i was reading today on the metro sri sitar meshwar maharaj in master of self-realization and he was saying like okay the you know the different five elements each one let's say this body it takes and takes and takes and takes and what's left well that that you are cannot be taken away and is not a five element it's just using this five elemental existence for a time through the concept that i exist i exist as this body oh my goodness sorry these guys they're chatting on teams and I thought I turned them off and I quit and I signed out and all this stuff, but teams evidently will not let me sign out. So, and they're just chatting. So anyway, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but it's like, no, no, we can't, we can't hear it. Oh, okay, good. Then it'll just be a little slight irritation on my part. That's good. <laughs> I didn't know if it was like heard and you know because they keep like boom boom no boom, problem boom, boom. no problem. So, okay, good. Okay, but yeah, and and in the beginning, the meditation that they talk about is concentrating on the mantra, you know, breathing mm -hmm. in, breathing out, and you're doing it deliberately maybe sitting for a time and as maharaj says and as you will experience your own self you may sit for a time but then you start to get up and move around and you know you're still concentrating on the mantra mantra is still running and then after a while you're listening to the mantra running and that's that invisible listener rather than actually trying to perform the mantra yeah okay Excuse me. Hold on a second. Oh. 
Huh. Pollen is crazy here. Yeah. Okay. And that's a, that's a little different than multitasking, I guess. What? The, the mantra running in the background. <laughs> well, yeah, you're different. like, in other words, and, and I experienced this when I was in the ashram in India, when I first received the mantra, everybody was like, okay, let's gather around. And we sat in the ashram for probably about maybe 45 minutes, one hour before, I think, either lunch or, or some break that we had. And Okay, sitting and, and you sit and your mantra, 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 mantra. And then it was like, okay, now it's time to go do this thing. And the mantra kept, I, it was like, okay, mantra, mantra. And that's when I experienced the going and getting my hair cut and the beard shaved off and then wandering around India for a couple of hours, having to take a rickshaw back because I just mm -hmm. lost myself in the mantra. Like there was just, there was no kind of, uh, I'm doing this. It's just like, just mantra. I'm concentrating on mantra. And then suddenly I'm walking and I'm sitting in this chair and I say, okay, uh, cut the hair. And I watch them and they shave the beard and all that. I said, let's, let's shave the beard too, which is crazy because I had been like grooming it mm -hmm. and, you know, holding on to it for like a couple of years. Like it was like a, I thought it was very spiritual to have the, the beard and the very long hair and the red rocks and and this this mantra just sat me in the barber's chair got my hair cut <laughs> face shaved and, uh, <laughs> then i wandered around you know I, I was just literally just wandering and and not not thinking about being lost not thinking about anything and not really even experiencing wandering mm. and I had to take a rickshaw back because it was far from the ashram and I had no idea where I was. I was like, oh, I need to get back. <laughs> then I did the evening bhajans and then I talked to Maharaj about it. And he actually was like, oh, don't just wander around like it's a city. You know, you can't just haphazardly wander around. Please don't do that again. But it was, you know, it's the mantra was just like. You know, Red Bull gives you wings. The mantra gave me wings. It just started moving about, and 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 that was it. But now, after time, that's probably been more integrated within your present uh, state or whatever you want to call it. The, well, uh, I mean, now again, just like when we sit here and meditate, this body I can use this body for meditation because I can sort of like, okay. In, in a moment, you go direct to presence. And you can use this body as an instrument, sort of a tuning fork to tune into presence. But in the normal everyday, there's not this, you know, you're not. Again, it's just scenes appearing and disappearing. Well, the sort of the present, the presence of um, the. Uh... Uh, greater awareness is sort of like the mantra running in the background, maybe, and doesn't and no longer affects like your ability to uh, like uh, communicate with your surroundings. It's more integrated like that. You see what I'm getting at? Uh, whereas, you know, you have the mantra running in the background now. And now you could say it's while well, the presence is running in the background and, you, and, it, and it allows you to not take the touch so much of uh well my not what, being yeah. here is really what allows you not to take the touch what, what was that because you're not here it's yeah. hard to take the touch of anything because you're not like you're not dragging a dead body around with you all the time mm. you know mm. it's it's scenes appearing and disappearing there's no but the, and there's no running of mantra or or looking for mantra or looking for presence. The only time of looking for presence when we're here and we say, okay, sit just with ourselves and okay, there we are. And it's very deep and that just unwinds everything. But it's no longer deliberate. It, 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 there, there are spontaneous actions in the moment arising. And, and, and just like we talked about, pick the water up. Drink some water and put it down. It's just action. Okay, it's finished. Spontaneous activity.
And it's just more of what the body is doing and more of the stuff that's passing by. It's all it's, it's just, just the same kind of... Um, There's... There I mean, just like, okay, for instance, I have to go in now to the office two days a week. So there's a commute and this and that, but it's like, just seems like, okay, now you're in the car. Okay. Now you're waiting for the Metro. Okay. Now you're on the Metro. Then I'm doing some readings and stuff on my phone from Kindle. Then, okay, now it's time. Now we get on the elevator or the escalator. Now we're going through security. Now we're in our office. Now we're working, but it's, it's just scenes. Because and, you're and it's, not, I, it's, you're, it's, I, you're not identifying what the scenes as being scenes, or yeah. even yourself, yeah, no, or even that I'm participating, or or yeah. that there's a uh -huh. that there's an I that could participate. A sort of identification of anything kind of drops. So you could say there's movement, but even you're not really identifying as as people. It's like there's movement. There's body like. For instance, people get off the escalator and on the escalator and this and that, and you're, you know, you wait for them. Okay, please, after you, this is that. But there's no, you're, <clears throat> you're just not. Uh, Everything's passing. Yeah, there's, there's no, there's no. <coughs> okay, coughing, spontaneous coughing, and then it's finished. Hmm. But for a moment, there was like, oh, there's a disturbance in the five elemental body. And there was an awareness of coughing, yes. But it there's no, like, I, I don't know how you would say this, because. No distinguishing characteristics, I guess. Of, uh, it, there's there's no idea of having a local identification in which things can relate or or uh, there's no relation because there's nothing there. Like you are you are your own self. You're no longer pretending to be a body. You're no longer trying to create an illusory sense that this is my life or anything like that. Nor are you trying to create a sense that you're trying not to be a body so there's not yeah. you just are like there's no uh and that that came spontaneous this is like when you say that came spontaneous yeah i mean i mean uh, there there was a period in your life where you were like like i am full identity about the, a lot of the things. mantra there the was mantra, a time right? after getting mantra that I concentrated on mantra. And I did that in every everything. Like if I'm waiting in line, I don't want to experience waiting in line, so I'm mantra. And then there became the listening to the mantra running. And okay. you could sort of like, if there's traffic or something, you drop back into mantra and you're like, okay, yeah, everything. And then there is a, You just drop everything. Like okay. there's no, yeah. there's no, uh, but even there's no one to drop it. It's not a deliberate no. act, this dropping. It's just a. <clears throat> some, okay. You know, Ranjit yeah. Maharaj layer, talked layer, about layer, the cooked layers, rice. Go ahead. Some layers drop off by themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like as if you're like disrobing basically. Yeah, okay, okay. And. Ranjit Maharaj talked about cooked rice. Once the rice is cooked, it can't be uncooked. Yeah. So it, it's like a. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and this is for this is everyone's experience, depending on the level of identification with body, which brings along so many other issues, mm -hmm. and this identification as anything that can be identified. Because as long as you're identifying, there is even the slightest identification left of I'm body, then just mantra, mantra, mantra all the time. Like if there's a, if, if, if there is a concept, because like Maharaj says, it's not part time. No. And when I went to India, it was full time. Like 
I was absolutely, you know, I had watched a little bit of Muji and stuff and I didn't know whether they were going to ask me to shave my head and, and, you know, mm. whatever they would have asked, tattoo you, do whatever. I was absolutely 100%. Like, I want to jump in and get cooked. Like, whatever mm. we need to do this. And so when Maharaj said mantra and we're doing this, and then everything that was experienced with mantra, which like Maharaj says, the tenants start to attack. I've talked about the gold. We went to yeah. the gold jewelry place and it just drove me nuts. I really wanted the gold, but I went back and I talked with master and I told him about this experience. When we had the food poisoning, I told him about the experience, everything because I wanted to surrender even the concept of having these good experiences, bad experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Maharaj instruction always was remain with mantra, remain with yourself with self, whatever it is. When I used to go in the morning and it was freezing cold water and I had to take a shower. And yet I would ru run mantra and sit and mantra and I would take that shower. As I told one of the other uh, people who came to the ashram, another devotee, because he was talking about he didn't like the mosquitoes and there were a few other things that he was like very upset about in our ashram. And I said, we have to understand that it's like, this is like a, like a Petri dish for spirituality. Mm -hmm. Like selfless self is creating these experiences mm -hmm. and selfless self through the body form of Maharaj is saying, Ignore all experiences. Remain with mantra. Remain with your selfless self. No matter what experiences appear on the screen, remain with your selfless self. Remain with mantra. Don't take the touch. And you start to understand that, like, okay, the food poisoning, and even I talked about the cab driving, because everybody at the ashram, the night that I was leaving, it was pouring down rain, and they were saying like, oh, you know, you're traveling at night and the cab driver, he's probably sleeping and it's going to be very dangerous and all this. And it was just pouring, pouring, pouring. But I kept very mantra, very mantra. Like, so I didn't experience the, the thrill or the, the scariness yeah. of driving in the pouring down rain in the dark on the way to the airport at like very late at night. <laughs> and it was because mantra. And, and you know that everything, even coming back to US, everything is, master is creating the experience. Are you going to form the idea that you're a body and that you doubt? Oh, my master says I'm selfless self. My master says I'm formless. But this thing here is trying to tell me, it's trying to draw me in and say, you're not formless. Mm -hmm. You're just a person. You know, there is such thing as a person. I mean, there is such thing as birth <laughs> and death. Of course, you were here. So, but then you have to go, mantra. No, 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 master. Master, okay. And then you go through this. And on the other side, you realize, I didn't take the touch. The food poisoning was amazing because... Going to the foreign hospital and even Maharaj having to leave and then come back. So I'm alone in this foreign country, in a hospital, completely by myself, but with mantra, not experiencing any of it. <clears throat> Being hooked up and having like uh, IV or not, you know, the fluids or whatever, not experiencing it. And then all of a sudden, like I said, scenes appear. Maharaj was there. He said, are you ready to go back? I said, oh, yes, Master. Let's definitely, definitely, let's go back. And uh, that was it. But I didn't experience that experience. And I didn't experience the cab drive experience. And when I was, I was dropped off kind of early in the morning because my flight was early and it was like, it, it was crazy kind of. I had to kind of wait throughout the night. And again, I'm all alone at the airport in a country where I know absolutely no one, and yet I'm not experiencing waiting for the airport to open. Because it's not like US where, I, I'm sure we've all been to India, but we, just to, 
in U.S., you can go into the airport and kind of chill and all that. But in India, mm-hmm. they had a certain time where if your flight is this, you cannot come in until this time. So you're outside. like. <laughs> and yet, with mantra, this was not experienced. This was, it, it was, and that's why it's just so important. Whatever is left of you, you just need to, okay, it's not true. It's not true. Remain with mantra. This thing seems to be happening. And yet you don't have to deliberate. It's like, do your job, do your duties. Like Maharaj says, it's not egoistic spirituality where you say, you know what? I have to quit my job, meditate, and be away from everything (laughs) in order to have this spiritual experience with myself. This would be very bad, actually, because you're going to build this concept that you are on this spiritual thing and you're going to renounce everything. But renunciation even is not, as you know yourself more and more, renunciation becomes automatic because there's nothing, Mm -hmm. there's, you're not there, you're not, you're not, (laughs) and yet you could still shop, of course, like toothpaste, oh, only have one tube left. Better order some toothpaste. You could say that's a deliberate action, but it's spontaneous action in the moment. And there's no me involved. I don't have to order the toothpaste as John and say, hmm, how would John order this toothpaste? Mm-hmm. It's just a spontaneous action. John? Yes, yes. The we are telling they were day to day waking dream experience so beautiful but it is not even like watching the television show it is entirely different dimension looks like to me when we watch a show we are there watching the show here when you explain you are not there basically you don't take a form like there's not a form where i can say i'm here and you're there yeah. It's Again, okay. physicality wise and within the bubble of illusion, yes, there's two forms, but there's no concept of that. There's no concept that you're really participating in anything because you know yourself in a real sense. The body may be going through some activities and some actions. And again, you could have the cough. Okay, five elemental body, and there's a little disturbance in the five elements. But that that you are doesn't experience, doesn't move, doesn't, the body moves within you. And if you're identified with that body that's moving, then you could say you're, you know, you're walking. But in reality, walking is happening. There's a lump of goo made of five elements that seems to be moving about. But there's a, a core that is unmoving, that you know is unmoving, that can't move, that's everywhere. That's why even when when the concept of death is talked about, it just doesn't make sense Mm. because there's nothing that could die. The five elements were returned to the five elements and you say, oh, I'm no longer gonna have the experience of being this body. But number one, you could have the experience of not being this body right now. Mm -hmm. And then if you know yourself in a real sense, again, you say, oh, this is the dream. The waking dream is what I used to call world. Mm -hmm. It goes on. Because you... You're not limited in any way. There's no limitation. So although there's the appearance of a limitation that this is John, this is John's life, but it's just not true. And yet again, do your job, do your duties. You don't tell your relatives, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, we have no relation because I'm not body. (laughs) <laughs> this, will upset, Thank you, this will upset the relatives for sure they'll call you a liar <laughs> and so you don't need to 
Because when you know yourself in a real sense, there's no need to convince anybody because everybody is just the five elements in a conglomeration that is labeled body and then has a name of whatever that body is. But that is all presence. That is all your own self. And that's how we can flip easily to the dream. Because in a dream, when you wake up on the other end, you know that no matter what kind of conversations or what was happening in the dream, it was all you. Every conversation, every body that seemed to be animating, whatever the power of the wind was, if you're dreaming that you're swimming, the water, all of that is coming from you. And you know that when you wake up, you say, oh, I had a good dream or I had a bad dream. But that dream was created formlessly. And for a time, you experienced a form existence that absolutely was formless. And when you know yourself in a real sense, there's no difference. But there still seems to be some, you, you're helping us as, as parts of yourself, of, or, you know, you're beyond. There's no concept of helping. There is a, why are at, you at 7.15, I come on and we start asking questions and then they're speaking and listening. And then it's just, then all of a sudden it goes, boom. We go but away. Something brought you here for some kind of reason or interest, at least in the bubble illusion. No, sense. actually, I mean, the main reason that this is here, number one, because in the USA talks, Maharaj came and he said, when I go back to India, you should guide them. But nothing happened. There was just, okay, go. When, when this is happening, this is happening. And then it was some, some folks had started meeting and then they popped up and said, hey, John, would you like to come in and start doing the talks or whatever? And because Maharaj had said, come to India, we guide them. And I did talk to him about it. And so here we are. And now, since uh, 2000, what, 17? So even if, even if I could describe it as you helping, you don't really... There's no concept of helping. I guess there's what's, no one. What's the, what's the difference between guide and help? <laughs> no, what Maharaj said, his words, and that was basically so that, like, you know, he's saying guide them in that it's it's like a uh, a passing on, I guess you would say, whatever you want to say, and. <laughs> And, and even there for a while, there were a lot of folks in the ashram who were like, why is this guy, you know, doing this? And did you give permission and all this kind of stuff? And it was a lot of stuff. Although Maharaj said yes, and I did. You know, I'm not trying to be like John the guru because I talked with Maharaj on WhatsApp and he said, that's why I put it on the website. He said, I'm very happy with these things you're doing. And you post it on Facebook and this and that. I'm very happy with that. And so that's why it continues. Now, that's why the website is called Ramakant Maharaj Dakshina. Dakshina is like a way to pay back the master for having the experience. Exactly. And this is the lineage. Thank you, John. It's just, yeah, just the way it's done. You're not doing it out of sympathy for us. So. <laughs> no, no. Because again, we're just whatever. We don't know what has ha happening. I, I we pop up and people are talking and asking questions, and then there's more speaking that happens, and then that's it. We're finished, and I record the you know send it up to YouTube, and then that's it. Then right after this, I'll probably just go and sit and watch some TV. So, but and it won't be like, oh, was it a good session or or a bad session or. Mm -hmm. or you know, or, you know, it's just not like that. So I, I got to wonder, why am I identifying it with it in any other particular way, possible ways? There's all kinds of ways I can identify with the event of being here. But none of them would really be the right one. So, so I, I guess mean, I, I sort of... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, 
you, you're, you're here and something brought you here. Yeah. That that brought you here is the same that's speaking and listening. And again, literally, as we see this little film strip of people, it's just, it's all one. The appearance mm-hmm. is a couple of different folks, but it's not a couple of different folks. Differences are not dif- identifiable, really. Just like I was thinking, um, I'm, um, I have a tendency of my mind wants to find out, okay, where is the exact point where identification starts taking place? And I can't find it. How would they tell you? But, well, it this seems like Maharaj. Seems- Maharaj would cut this very quickly. How, how does this help you? And and he says, I really like this. Yeah. He says, will this information be useful at time of leaving the body? Uh-huh. I mean, think about this. You're on your <laughs> deathbed. You're about to leave um, the body. And you say to yourself, I wonder at what point identification happens. Well, there how is one help? thing. There is one thing that, that does lend a possible validity to that approach is that... Uh, in if if i did identify and if if i can see identification happening every moment i am sort of like out above the identification i'm not the identification i no longer have to identify with it if i can see the identification happening and that's that sort of seems to be like what's happening is like a, i'm not identifying as much as i used to but this and you that seems to be all these easier. things just has to remain with yourself the self that black hole will suck in mm-hmm. all these concepts. Maharaj said during the USA talks to this one lady who was saying, you know, Maharaj, sometimes I'm present, sometimes I'm not. And then sometimes even I prefer that I can see myself become presence or not become presence. And he says, stop all this thinking. Be mm-hmm. totally blank. And this mm-hmm. is the best advice. Mm-hmm. Because the one who's trying to figure it out is a false illusory nothing mm-hmm. and that nothing <clears throat> wants to be something so yeah. bad yes. that it will create a million mm-hmm. questions in it's a million different ways to sustain its existence yes yes which it does not exist ways i remember nizar gadatta said in uh in book one just one one time he said there's no such thing as ways so it's sort of, I'm looking for ways to understand yeah, yeah, and no, no ways. This way is direct. Right. Write to yourself with self. Yes. Remain there. And that's it. As Nizagadatta Maharaj says, the door to the I am is the doorway into your own self. The I am is that sense of existence, the sense of presence. And you remain there. And that's, that's, that's then this that you are literally just pulls everything there's there's an you can't even say emptiness because there's there's a fullness in the emptiness it, you're yeah. you're without any attributes and yet you're also not missing anything nor could anything be added to you and that that would sort of be what they call the form of the self because it's not it's not one way or the other type but of see form. there this concept of that would be the form of the self this is prior <laughs> to words so yeah. there would be no need to for words to explain because there would be no one there to form words mm-hmm. not only are you prior to words that are spoken you're prior to words as they begin to stir in the first stirring of mental of this is a word that's coming then there's a thought process and then there's a speaking of the word but this is prior to all of that and when you remain there no words come you're you're out of it because anything that you can label or anything you can discuss or anything you can talk about is just illusory And you know this because there's no way that you are 